Well, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy garbage day. Uh, it is great to be with you here this morning. Uh, this last weekend we celebrated Pentecost, a huge celebration in the church, the birthday of the church. And my joy of seeing uh, the Spirit work and live amongst our congregation, amongst my own family, seeing the, j the gifts and the joys that, that the Spirit brings, that Spirit of truth. Well, today's uh, devotion is one that is based on that. It's based on a reading from John 14, 15, and 21. To, and it's about, uh, it's one that I pulled from a, a, one of my devotionals I use from Higher Things. It talks about how we all have the Spirit. Who? We'll talk about that in a moment. And then what that means in our lives, especially in this uh, very diverse and complex world where there's a lot of truths out there. So good morning to you, and let's begin with God's Word. From John 14, 15 to 21, Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, and to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Good morning, Paul. I just saw you pop in there. So the devotion that I'm going to share, I'm going to use a little bit of an of, of a excerpt from this, uh, comes from the, the Eve of Pentecost from Higher Things. And it focuses on that part, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. So from the, Easter, uh, from the season of Easter to Pentecost, which began on the 50th day after the resurrection of our Lord, which was and is a very exciting day. It is a day when the Lord kept his promise, recorded by the prophet Joel. On that great day, the Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus poured out upon the church the Holy Spirit, who leads her to fulfill the great commission of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is to go out and to make disciples, teaching, teaching and baptizing. Now, sometimes people get confused about this. And they ask, but didn't God's people have the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament? Well, yeah, of course they did, but in a different way. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament was especially connected to God's house in the form of a tabernacle and later to the temple run by specially appointed priests who conducted holy sacrifices for the people of God. But do you recall what happened to the temple when Jesus died on the cross at Calvary? Well, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And this meant that the holy sacrifices performed in the temple were no longer necessary because the final sacrifice for sin had just been rendered by Jesus on the cross. Now the Holy Spirit was now moving out, out of the Old Testament houses, so to speak, kind of like out, because I mentioned this last Sunday in our sermon. And it was time for the Holy Spirit to move into the house called the church. And what is that? Well, the church is not a building made of physical materials, but consists of all Christians, new priest, royal priest, who confess Jesus Christ and who gather around his word and sacraments. Upon this church, the Holy Spirit has been poured out. But how do you know if you share in the gift of the Holy Spirit? How? Well, you know because the, in the church you were baptized into Jesus. Titus, one of the early church pastors, wrote this. He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by washing of regeneration renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So the, the point is, you do have the Holy Spirit, which is poured out to you from the Father and the Son. And he lives in you, so you are a priest of God each and every day. You don't need to go to places, but you need to check that word of truth. And that's why in this passage that I read, Jesus tells us that if we are his disciples, if we love him, if we have that spirit, we will keep his commandments. Now that kind of goes in tension with a lot of things today, where you have different churches or different Christians who choose and pick different commandments and ones they do like and don't like and think, we don't have to do this anymore. Well, the fact is, if we have that spirit living within us, if we love the Father and love the Son and love the Spirit, then we will be keeping his commandments. 
Well, those are really hard. We realize that even the Old Testament, they weren't, weren't able to keep the commandments fully over and over again. That's why we rely upon the Spirit's power within us. That Spirit was poured into us at our baptisms. That Spirit that fills us each day to love God, to love our neighbor, and forgives us, forgives us all of our sins each time that we fail to do that fully. That is the Spirit that lives in us each day. And the Spirit then leads us out. As I mentioned, out, out of the Old Testament temple, out of our place of worship on Sunday and Saturday, out into the world to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to bring peace where there's tension, to bring love and hope where there is worry and anxiety, to bring comfort and to bring truth. In a world where we have so many different ideas of what truth is, everyone has their own vision and they want to, people want to rewrite history or rewrite present and, and do different things, but well, we lose that side of what truth really is. Truth is Jesus. Truth is God's word incarnate. Truth is God's commandments. Truth is a God who so loved us that he came into this world in order to give his life for us. Truth is what we are called to share with others. And we do that all by being led, by being pushed, by being led, by going out, out of our homes today, out of our uh, residences, out of our normal routines, to be able to see those who need to hear, who need to hear the love, the peace, the joy of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So allow that to be what, what leads you this week. Allow those joys and fires and, and uh, winds of that first Pentecost that we remember this last Sunday to be that which sends you out into the world that sends you out into the lives of others, to send, send you out with peace and love and joy so that others might, might be saved. So that was a devotional thought I wanted to share today. And uh, there's a lot of different places where you can find these. Like I said, I found this one on Higher Things. It's a subscription service I have from a lot of Lutheran pastors and share uh, different thoughts on things. And that one was from, uh, or from the Pentecost East. Oh, wow. And uh, there's a lot of things to give thanks for today. Uh, as I saw Paul jump on, uh, thanks that he's home and recovering, doing well. I love seeing the updates from Celeste and how she shares that, um, that uh, you're, you're doing much better and healing. Uh, also giving thanks for Gail, who is uh, 19 years cancer-free. Boy, that is amazing. Um, I also give thanks today for the Rundles uh, who celebrate uh, their, their marriage together of 18 years and also who are uh, looking to be moving or need some assistance. So if you're able to help out, please give the church office call or give uh, Dave or Jennifer a call to be able to assist in packing boxes, which I believe they're doing tonight. Great anniversary thing to be doing. Um, or they also have some other work, handyman work around the house. Um, so with all those things, let's just go to our Heavenly Father in a time of prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you fulfilled your promise by sending the gift of your Holy Spirit to unite disciples of all nations in the cross and resurrection of your son, Jesus. By the preaching of the gospel, spread this gift to the ends of the earth through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, have a very blessed day. Enjoy it. It's still a little bit cool today, but the rain that came really refreshed our, our land, our ground. And uh, now I can look at going out and mowing the yard since it's probably not going to get too hot again. Although tomorrow they said it's supposed to be 90. So uh, I love the, the changes in the, in the frequency of what we have here of uh, styles of, uh, of our outdoor weather. Uh, enjoy it uh, in, as much as you can. And remember, you are filled with the Spirit. So go out and share that Spirit. Share that truth. Share that love. Share that joy. Share Jesus so that others might come to know him. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Know that I love you. And aloha.